boys will be boys, Nescaf, uh, Nespa. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, as a child, Gavin was a delicate, uh, sensitive, a rather highly strong little boy. <laughs> but at this time, he was helping me to write uh, my, uh, my, my, my music for la danse. Your belly, sweet. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, pardon. <laughs> but after that, you see, he began decomposing all by himself. <laughs> 1939, and war clouds were gathering. In England, young men gallantly answered the call to arms. Gavin Blood was no exception. <laughs> Gavin joined the crack fifth foot and mouth regiment. <laughs> Ports everywhere, soldiers embarked for the front. On the dockside, crowds were singing and cheering and laughing because they weren't going. soon instilled his love of music into others. <laughs> Gavin was tireless in his efforts to entertain his fellow soldiers. sent to Colditz prison, where his music and his piano were his only escape. <laughs> Two days afterwards, Germany surrendered and Gavin settled down in Vienna. Schön. 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 <laughs> you know, during the war, everybody here in Vienna was poor. I was poor, my wife was poor, the butler was poor, the maid was poor. <laughs> but it was this poverty that brought all the people together. You would see advertisements in the newspaper saying, communist with a knife and fork wishes to meet capitalist with steak and kidney pudding. <laughs> Bravo. I think that Gavin Blood came here for the music. After all, where else but in Vienna would you find music like this, played with such style, with such panache? Where else would you find musicians like this? Will you shut your bloody mouth? <laughs> but you know, seriously, I think that's a cause. <laughs> 
Gavin's downfall was Maria the opera singer. <laughs> she was that a woman? <laughs> That's what everybody kept asking. Is that a woman? <laughs> In 1949, Gavin fell in love with opera singer Maria Carlo. It was her voice that first attracted him. But Maria was promised to Count Mantovani, a renowned swordsman. the 15th, 1950. Later, disillusioned, Gavin returned to England. He, 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 he was a wonderful man. He was a wonderful man. Really, he could play anything. He was Neil Oppert in the Serenade. He would play Finkel's Cave or Overture of the Hebrides. He played that. I mean, the Four Indian Love Licks by Amy Woodford Bypass. <laughs> and no I mean, you could be in a pub with him all night long. You would never even know he had a penny. <laughs> you, you, you used to say, I'll do it to my two favourite composers. Mozart and Liszt. You no, know, he only drank shandy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wrote this, uh, what they call it, ele 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 electronic music for the, uh, um, for the uh, documentary about the new computerised postal service. <laughs> what happened? He got lost in the post. With the advent of pop, there was less and less demand for Gavin's kind of music. <laughs> At the age of 62, overcome with remorse and chronic flatulence, he took to his bed, where he remained for three years. Doctor. I thought he was a bit familiar for a vicar. <laughs> You've eaten your bread poultice again, haven't you? <laughs> it's time for his bed bath, anyway. I'm not having a bed bath. Get up. I'm not having a tuck me. Get on a bath a bit, then. <laughs> Don't worry, old fellow. We'll have you on your feet in no time. <laughs> I'll have a job getting a coffin down these steps. <laughs> So, on May the 12th, 1974, Gavin Blanc died of chronic ecstasy. And so he never heard the brass band from the village where he was born, just outside Wedlock, play his tone poem, Bird of Freedom, which perhaps was just as well. 